Hey everybody, Joe from Complete Carnivore here. Today we're cooking on the Blackstone. I don't think I've done any videos on this yet. I've had it for, I guess since February, so eight, eight months, six months, seven months. I can't do math. Six months, I think. Um, mainly I've done burgers, I've done bacon, pancakes, all kinds of breakfast stuff. I've done some like crunch wraps. I've sauteed up some peppers and onions for my wife, but I've never done any stir fries. And that's one thing I've wanted to do. So today we're doing Kung Pao chicken. I got all the different ingredients here and we'll go through those. This recipe is from Kenji's book, The Walk. It's an amazing cookbook, go buy it. I'm not gonna give you all the ingredients partially because I don't remember all of them right now. Um, but this recipe is on page 61, I believe, maybe page 62. Uh, it's kind of an Americanized Chinese uh, Kung Pao chicken, kind of the kind you'd get at a, at a takeout place. Um, so we got chicken, we got some vegetables. The recipe calls for peppers and zucchini. I hate peppers, uh, like bell peppers. So I decided to use some green beans instead. We got some uh, red Chinese chilies. We got some garlic and, and ginger. We got some scallions, we got some peanuts. We got some sauce. We got some slurry, we got some chicken. Uh, this chicken, what you kind of do is you chop it up and you like put it in water and you mix it up with your hands and knead it up really good. Uh, it kind of helps break it down, helps soften it. Then you marinate it. The marinade has, marinade has some light soy sauce, some Shaoxing wine. I think there's some sugar in there. A couple other ingredients. Um, the sauce is pretty similar. It's rice wine vinegar, dark soy sauce, light soy sauce, Shaoxing, sugar, uh, vinegar, rice, rice vinegar. Um, I might be missing one or two things there. Uh, but that's it. And you basically cook all this up. This is my, again, my first time doing a uh, stir fry here. So we'll start cooking some chicken. This is nice and hot. Uh, this side over here, the burner's not on, so it's gonna be a little bit cooler. So as I cook things, I can kind of shove it out over there. So um, let's get this chicken on and get it cooking. One thing I like about uh, kind of Asian dishes, Chinese dishes is they usually cook pretty quickly. You're looking at maybe a five, 10 minute cook, depending on what size you have. Of course, this is normally done on a walk, but I wanted to do it on the Blackstone and see how it turned out. Bad thing about most Asian dishes is you use a lot of dishes. I mean, there's a bowl, a bowl, little cups, other bowls, there's a lot of stuff going on. So there's a lot of dishes to do afterwards. Um, again, this is my first time doing a stir fry on the Blackstone. So we'll see how it goes. You just want to get the chicken cooked. It shouldn't take too long. I got this on high heat. Again, like a wok, you're going to want it as hot as you can get it. So I kind of figure that's the same I want to do here. Um, so we're going to cook the chicken. Then we're going to cook the aromatics, the ginger and garlic and, and peppers. Just get a little bit of uh, a flavor from those. Then we put the vegetables on. Add the chicken back in, add the peanuts, add the scallions, and pour the sauce over, and that's about it. So, um, you see we're already getting some good color on the chicken. Uh, I like using one of these big flat griddle spatulas. A uh, putty knife also works great. And also, I like using a bench scraper. Kind of just depends on how I'm feeling. But they're all good for tossing foods around, tossing meat around. So I kind of like the putty knife because it has a longer handle. You don't have to get quite as close to the food. Uh, and it's good for scraping up all the junk off the griddle when you're done too. So give this chicken a couple more minutes to cook and take, get a little bit of color. You want to kind of have it in one layer. You don't want it all piled up in one spot because obviously you got this big griddle. You might as well use it all. So still a couple little raw bits like right there. Don't want to eat that. So we'll make sure this is cooked. Uh, and it'll cook a little bit as it's sitting over here too. Uh, the burner's off, but it's still still hot. So you kind of just keep things moving. It'll all eventually get cooked. This is uh, I'm making a double recipe, so I have two pounds of meat here. This is uh, chicken thighs. I just chopped it up. One trick when cutting chicken thighs, chicken breasts, uh, if you have them pull them out of your freezer cut them up when they're partially frozen makes it a lot easier to cut makes it a lot easier to cut especially in the smaller pieces like this so um 
So yeah, I took the chicken out of the freezer a couple days ago and it was still a little bit frozen this uh, afternoon when I went to cut it up, which is nice. I always like that. Um, but yeah, just boneless, skinless thighs. Good thing about a spatula like this, it's kind of a heavy duty one. I mean, there's not much flex in it. You can use it to chop up bigger pieces of the chicken if you want. Works great for that, especially if it has a kind of a sharp edge. Let's go another minute or so here. There's still a couple pieces that I'm a little bit questionable on. Of course, you don't want to eat raw chicken. Nobody's going to enjoy that. Better to cook it a little bit more than not enough. Again, it's chicken thigh, so you don't run the same risk of it being super dry as you do uh, if it was chicken breast. You can use chicken breast for this. There's no problem with that. I just like the thigh meat better. I think it tastes better. It's usually cheaper, so it's like three bucks a pound. So altogether, you're looking at probably under $10 for this whole meal. Um, maybe even less, serving it over rice. There'll be some ingredients, and, and that's another thing about most Asian cooking is there's usually some ingredients recipes call for you won't have in your normal pantry. Um, there's all kinds of different, like fermented bean paste. This doesn't have any of that. Um, Shaoxing wine is something most people probably don't have. You can use cooking sherry as a substitute. Um, this uses light and dark soy sauce. If you just have the standard grocery store bottle of soy sauce, you're going to be fine. Um, but there's a lot of a lot of specialty ingredients that you might not have in your pantry. But once you stock up on it, once you take a trip to the Asian market and get a few things, you can probably make do. Um, the thing I do like about most Asian cooking and stir fries like this, is you can kind of modify it to fit your taste. Like I said, I don't like red peppers. I don't like green peppers, bell peppers. Um, so I leave them out. If you like them, put them in. If you like a lot of it, put it in. If you want onions in this, chop some onions up. I've done this with bok choy. I've put carrots in it. I've put uh, corn before. I guess if you have those little baby corns, you could throw some of that in here. But kind of whatever you like to eat, these dishes are very malleable. You can change them around and let them fit what you want. So I think this chicken is done. So let's slide it over to the side and let's get a little more oil on here Where's that? and get the vegetables kind of cooking again i got some zucchini this is a time of year where everybody has zucchini they're trying to get rid of and i got some uh, fresh green beans so use whatever vegetables you like uh, the recipe traditionally calls for peppers uh, like bell peppers and, and the like so I think I was actually supposed to do the uh, the garlic and uh, ginger first, so let's get that out here. Get these peppers, get a little bit of color on these, and then we'll mix it back in with the vegetables. The nice thing about the, the, the griddle as opposed to the wok, it's big enough where you can kind of do, get all kinds of different things going at once. If you forget a, forget a step, you're gonna have room somewhere else on the griddle to put it. Um, you don't want your garlic to burn. Tastes bitter. You just want to give it a little bit of color. Get some of the oil that's on there flavored with the peppers and the uh, the garlic and ginger. Um, in the book, the recipe has you just slice the ginger, a couple slices of it. I like it chopped up. I don't like biting into a big giant chunk of ginger. Uh, it's not my favorite, so. All right. Let's get all these vegetables back in here and mixed up. You kind of just want them soft, a little bit of color on them. You don't want them like brown and burnt. Um, I know with a wok, especially when you're cooking like two pounds of chicken, a lot of times you'll have to do it in batches because if you put too much chicken in at once, you're kind of steaming the chicken rather than frying it. Nobody likes that. That makes kind of a little bit mushier chicken. Same with the vegetables. You want to be able to get the heat and, and I mean, wok cooking is generally high heat cooking. So let's taste one of these green beans and see if it's tender yet. Oh, it needs a little bit more. Still got a little bit of crunch. I think I want a little bit of crunch on those. Not a ton. Let me taste a piece of zucchini and see where we're at. Let's get nice and soft. So another minute here. And then we'll kind of combine everything and add the sauce and the peanuts. The roasted peanuts are one of my favorite parts of this. Let's go ahead and add those now. Get a little bit of 
toasting on them maybe. Not necessary, but. Um, most of the recipes in the book, in this cookbook, they're easy to follow. Um, he breaks it down pretty good step by step. And a lot of the recipes, once you learn the techniques and some of them, uh, like mashing the chicken with your hands in the water and rinsing it off, that's, that's used in a lot of the different recipes. Um, okay, got some scallions, we'll throw those in. Uh, so, a lot of the recipes are very, very similar. A lot of them, the ones I've cooked anyway. There's some other ones in there that are a little bit different. Um, all right, let's get this chicken back over here. We'll get everything mixed up and then add the sauce and the cornstarch slurry to thicken it. So this is looking delicious. But yeah, once, once you've done a few of the recipes and you learn a few of the techniques, uh, it's pretty easy to do, pretty simple. I think this is looking good. Let's add some sauce. This is one thing I was scared about is I don't want all the sauce running down the uh, grease drain. And we have a cornstarch slurry here that should thicken things up. So hopefully that sauce will get thickened up. Be nice and clingy to everything. You get a ni some of the nice toasty flavor from this uh, sauce cooking on the griddle. And this is pretty much ready to go. Mix it up a little bit more. One thing you do get with a wok, especially if you're using the gas range or like in a, in a Chinese restaurant with the big wok burners, the flames are coming up and you get, uh, and Kenji talks about this quite a bit in his book and some of his uh, videos he has on YouTube. Uh, it's wok A. I don't know how it's spelled or anything, but uh, it's as you're cooking, some of the oil kind of aerosolizes, flames hit it, it catches on fire, falls back down onto the meat and it's kind of gives it a little bit of a smoky flavor. Uh, to everything. So this is the Kung Pao chicken and we're pretty much done. So I'm going to turn the burners off. We'll get this in a bowl, which I forgot. I have to run inside to grab one. Uh, and we're going to serve this over rice. So that's it. I don't know how long this took. Maybe 10 minutes, maybe even less. And we're ready for dinner. So again, it's a cheap meal. It's under 10 bucks. Uh, and this is like a double portion. This will give us plenty of good leftovers. Um, so actually let me take, let me get a bite of this. We'll make sure it's good. I assume it is. If you want it hotter, put more of these little peppers in. If you don't like it spicy, leave a few of them out. I put a couple of them in just to give some flavor, but hot. Mm. But that is delicious. I love the crunchiness of the peanuts. I love the nice thick sauce on it. I think the green, this is the first time I've done it with the green beans. I, I like the, the little uh, crunch texture they add because the zucchini is kind of mushy. So a vegetable in there that's a bit crunchy is nice to have. So pick up this book, go buy it today. I'll leave a link down below uh, for you to order it. It's wonderful. There's dozens and dozens, I don't know, maybe even a hundred recipes in here. Pork, chicken, beef, vegetables. There's noodle dishes, there's stir fries, there's... Um, all kinds of soups. There talks about using a wok for deep frying. Um, excellent book. Go get it and try this Kung Pao chicken recipe. I would use this as the first one you cook because it has a lot of the basic techniques you're gonna use in a lot of the other recipes. Again, do it on a wok or if you have a Blackstone, if you have another griddle outside, you, you can use that. If you have a, just a big flat metal thing you put on your uh, charcoal grill or gas grill, that works fine too, so all right. I want to eat, so we're going to be done now. And my wife heard me and brought me a bowl. So we're going to get this loaded up and inside for dinner. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Again, I'll put a link down below to go get this book. Um, I've had it for, I think it came out in March, sometime around there, but I, I've had it for a while and I love it. Everything I've tried is great. Uh, leave any questions or comments. Be sure to like and subscribe. It's always nice when I see new subscribers. So, thanks for watching.